come here. Hello and uh, welcome everybody to uh, this would be now our our Thursday edition of, uh, of, of meetings here with the candidates, council candidates for the upcoming election. The election's only a few days away and we're very thankful to have uh, so many great council candidates here with us today. Uh, my name is Rick Chase. I'm a volunteer with the Ottawa Board of Trade. Uh, I sit on the advocacy committee for the Board of Trade. So um, before getting over to the candidates, I wanna give them lots of time to talk about, um, about their priorities and about priorities for why they're, why they're seeking office. But I uh, do wanna share a little bit about our buildupottawa.ca uh, is our, is that's the website Build Up Ottawa campaign that the Ottawa Board of Trade has launched. Uh, I'd encourage anybody, I won't go you know, step by step through that, but I'd encourage uh, not just those on the call, but people that are watching this uh, later on to uh, to please go and, and take a look at that site. We're, what we're really calling on the next council, what the business community is calling on our next council and, and mayor is to be, you know, to be collaborative. That, that would be kind of the, the key word. Um, we, we believe as a business community that, that, that it's possible to drive growth, to fund smart transit projects, to fund smart infrastructure, but also to be thinking about fostering innovation. And, and certainly there's some, there's some short-term goals that we would expect the, the council and the mayor to, to uh, be focused on, but we're also asking our next city council to be very focused on the long-term vision and on the future of the city, right? Can we be affordable, inclusive, sustainable? And honestly, we should be thinking to be world-class. Uh, so in, in partnership with, uh, you know, we, we need to walk the walk and also be collaborative. And that's what today is really all about. It's setting the stage with some community leaders who are seeking office and looking to, uh, to be part of that city council. And uh, this is an opportunity for us to create a bit of a dialogue with you, which we hope continues into the future uh, with council and with uh, and with people that, that were seeking office that weren't elected to council as well, that we, we wanna keep a dialogue going with, uh, with them. Uh, we are a, a um, member driven, I'm told I have to say this, member driven, we're nonpartisan and we're, we're not for profit, our, the Ottawa Board of Trade. Um, but what that means is we were able to go to our membership and say to the membership, you know, what are, what are your priorities for the next city council? Right. And so we were able to pull our membership that that drove really uh, a lot of our advocacy for this election. But it will drive our advocacy coming out of the election when we do direct work, hopefully with the uh, with the upcoming council. So that's that's a, a little bit about the Board of Trade, who we are. What, why do people join the why do businesses join the Board of Trade? It, it really is different if you go business to business. And it's probably a little bit different from our small business, medium business versus large organizations, but it has a lot to do with business to business benefits and the networking that happens from uh, just sometimes being in the same event or the same room. Um, and then the other piece of that puzzle is uh, advocacy. You know, a, a small business owner in particular rarely has the opportunity to uh, come to a city council meeting, often because they're thinking about their business 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. They're often in the business working at, a, you know, they're, they're, uh, they rarely have the opportunity to interact directly with city council. It just doesn't, it, 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 there's rarely the horsepower to do that. That's where they rely on the board of trade, bringing up um, where we can pool some messages. We can go and talk on behalf of the business community. And truly the, the board of trade is the, the voice of business for uh, Ottawa. So uh, without further ado though, that's enough about the board of trade. I, I really want to hear from candidates who've taken the time, maybe given up on eating some lunch today to come and join us. Uh, I'll use uh, a bit of a, a randomizer, which is completely unnecessary, but I think it's fun to, uh, to be able to kind of draw names from a hat, so to speak, so that we go in no particular order. Uh, on the line today, we have um, at least nine, I think nine uh, candidates, uh, just doing a quick count. Yeah, eight or nine candidates. So i uh, very thankful for, for this uh, number of individuals who've come here today to join us. Um, we'll start with just some quick introductions. So if you want to take about a minute, uh, what I'll do is to not interrupt your thought. Uh, I'll, I have a white piece of paper. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of raise up the paper when you have about 10 seconds, 15 seconds left to wrap up. So if you kind of catch me out of the corner of your eye, 
waving a white sheet of paper. You don't have to stop instantly, but you know, it's just trying to be respectful of everybody's time, start to kind of wrap through your, uh, or finish up your thought. When we get to kind of a, a Q&A portion, we'll have a little bit more time, but for intros, let's take a minute. We'll start here using the old randomizer with uh, Richard Garrick from uh, Ward 24, Barhaven East. Uh, Richard, if you'd like, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about why you're running. Hi, and uh, thank you very much for the time today to speak. And I know uh, some of my fellow candidates are here as well. So they've probably heard this speech a couple of times. Um, but uh, my name is Richard Garrick. I'm a local resident here in Barhaven. I've lived here for 30 years. Uh, I'm a teacher, a former youth worker. Uh, you know, I've lived in this community and seen it grow so, so much over the last 30 years. Uh, we've seen one independent grocer turn into multiple stores, multiple locations, small businesses and develop here. Um, for me, I'm running for a couple of different reasons. I believe we need a strong voice at council. I also am looking to bring more youth and community services to Barhaven. We have a great need there, um, as well as our transit. We have to get that on track and get it to Barhaven with a local focus that we can access some of our small businesses and you know things like that. Um, I believe that this is probably one of the biggest elections since amalgamation. Um, it is going to be one of the largest shifts in our city. And we need a strong team at City Council to work with all the organizations here in the city and have a voice for residents, not just in our own ward, but across the city. Uh, and it's going to be vital because it is just such a big election. Um, you know, those are some of the reasons I'm running. You know, I've lived here long enough. I've volunteered here. I've worked in customer service for over 10 years in many different fields. And I've lived in different parts of the city, uh, you know. That's it. I like the city. I love the city. We've seen amazing changes and we have a great opportunity to lead into the future uh, of Ottawa for the downtown core, La Breton, all these different projects that are coming our way in this next session of council. Thank you very much, Richard. I'll turn it over to uh, Wilson Lowe, uh, also from Ward 24, which is Barhaven East, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Wilson, uh, please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Wilson. Just like Richard said, I'm sure you may have heard this spiel before. Spiel before. Um, I'm, I'm running because I know that our infrastructure and our services, like our roads, public transit, uh, uh, recreation, policing, among others, have to uh, keep up with this growth that we're experiencing. Uh, I grew up north of Toronto um, in Markham, and we I, I lived through the um, I lived through the rapid suburban growth that we're experiencing now uh, before, and I saw what uh, the benefits of a a government that keeps up with that growth through investment in its community and everything. Um, uh, very similarly, like I think Barhaven has a very very unique small business community, whether it's because of our distance from the city or just because of the people that live here and their entrepreneurial spirit. We have a, a small business community that's very much part of this, um, th th very much a part of the fabric of our community. And they're as much a part of our lives as we are a part of theirs. We're the people that support them and they uh, support this community in ways that um, are far beyond, um, far beyond financial. So anyway, um, no, my, my platform is also focused on things like uh, making sure that LRT comes out responsibly to Barhaven, uh, making sure that our local public transit system is making sure that we use, uh, you know, reallocate our resources so that our local transit can be stronger and that people can get around using any mode of transportation. Thank you very much. Over to uh, Atik Qureshi. Atik uh, from Ward 24 Barhaven East as well. Uh, I'll turn it over to you. Please introduce yourself. Hello everyone. Uh, most of you know me. Uh, my auntie Kureshi. I'm living in uh, Barhaven for almost eight, nine years now. Moved to Barhaven in 2014. Out of our residence since 2017. By profession, I'm an income tax financial consultant. And uh, the reason I'm running uh, for uh, city council is the mess we are observing for past 20 years. Now, it is the time when council is going to change. We need people who actually know how to work. We don't need ambitions is one side, but we need a knowledgeable people who work hard. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a financial consultant. I'm a tax teacher. And I also have a, a business uh, uh, running. I have a business, small business uh, on site, which my wife runs that. So I encourage my own family uh, for women's participation in business also. So these are the things, uh, when I'm seeing the things which are not going in in right directions, a blind spending of money, and that is something which people push me that uh, whether I gave them the solution of their issue, I should do something for the city. So that's why I stepped down to go this position. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, from Ward 22, which is Riverside South and Finley Creek, uh, M. McClellan, I'll turn it over to you. Please introduce yourself. You just have to take yourself off mute. There you are. Okay. Hi, my name is M. McClellan, and I'm running for Ward 22, Riverside South, Finley Creek. The reason I'm running is because I got so fed up. I was tired of non accountability at both uh, the city hall level. I was tired of non-policing, I was tired of no accountability at OC Transpo, and I felt that our ward was being totally neglected and just being used as a cash cow. I believe that uh, your counselor should be promoting and making your ward distinct. And the way we have to do that is through small businesses. The problem here is the rents are extremely high and they are controlled by a bigger, um, uh, businesses like Urbandale, they own all the, the property. So when the small business owner comes in, <clears throat> the rents are really high, they're struggling to survive. And um, I think as a city councilor, we have to decide like, you have to be a distinct community. The only way you can do that is through small businesses. Like for instance, Urbandale um, along Earl Armstrong is building once again, a little mini mall. Now that mini mall is gonna be the same old, same old. We've got mini malls all over the place. We've got the pet shop, we've got the weed shop, we've got Subway, but we have no distinction. I can go from, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead and finish your thought. I just feel that we should promote small businesses and make them viable within the community to make our community distinct. Thank you very much. Turning it over here to, from Ward 9, which is uh, uh, Knoxdale Maryville Ward, uh, Michael Wood. Michael, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Rick. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Wood. I'm right for Knoxdale Maryville Ward 9. Over the pandemic, I became the voice and face in the media for small business as my business was crushed by uh, the pandemic and uh, had to lay off 23 people. I created local jobs, which is what small business does for people in our community. We create local jobs and give all people an opportunity to work in fields that they want to work in. On top of that, during the pandemic, um, I worked with Ottawa Public Health. I was getting a lot of messages from small business owners about the state of their mental health. I created town halls on mental health where people could find out where they could access the resources as a city councilor, I'll continue to work with Ottawa Public Health. We set up pop-up vaccination sites in small businesses to get people vaccinated, get people to come back into small businesses and support them. And as we're seeing a shift in our economic landscape of more remote working, more hybrid working, we're gonna have to continue to engage small business in our community so that people can continue to build their livelihoods, do what they wanna do, and support small business every step of the way. So thank you very much, Rick. Thank you, Michael. Over to uh, Aaron Coffin, who's from Ward 23, which is Canada South. Uh, Aaron, please go ahead and tell us, uh, uh, introduce yourself and tell us, tell us why you're running. Yeah, so I'm Aaron Coffin, and yes, I am running for uh, counselor here in Canada South, Ward 23. And uh, after 24 years of experience being um, an employee in the federal public service, where I have touched on a variety of different issues that have affected cities, even such as um, public transit, uh, clean water, wastewater, so basically sewage and, uh, and water filtration and whatnot. But I've also worked on projects that are tourism and uh, culture related as well. Uh, I had a little small business before I had kids. Uh, which was a small catering and sommelier um, company. Uh, but I ended up having to close that down once the children showed up because then I had no time to enjoy cooking and, and serving people. But I have grown up in uh, Canada South and um, I have worked around here. And I just find that our neighborhoods here aren't thriving. I mean, we uh, have had no infrastructure in quite a while. There's terrible transit to get to places. And we have seen a lot of small businesses here shutter or move to other parts, such as going to Barhaven or going to Canada North or going to Stittsville, because the community and the businesses and the business structure there is much more thriving. 
Uh, I also would like to find ways to bring opportunities to Canada South where people can come out here for festivals and more community events, which I think would be good for everybody, including businesses. And so I want to explore things like um, business improvement authorities for this area um, and, and just finding ways that people can work and play and enjoy themselves in their neighborhoods here. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, to uh, Pat Brennan now, which is Ward 24, uh, Barhaven East. Uh, Patrick Brennan, over to you. Oh, you're just still muted there, sir. Take yourself off mute if you can. You there go. you are. Yeah, okay, thanks, Rick. Uh, the reason I guess to start off with why I run is, is really um, a lot to do with transit, um, just the different issues that have been faced, uh, of course, with OC Transpo, with cancellations and delays and those types of things, and, and some of the routes as well, but also the LRT. So I won't spend any time, much time on that, but I think those are very important things for the small business community to have uh, good transit and reliable transit. As far as my background, um, I am uh, I've twice elected school board trustee and three of those years were representing Bar Haven. So there were some schools built while I was uh, while I was a trustee. I've also raised my family uh, in Bar Haven and uh, been a volunteer for a number of organizations for a number of years. Um, the, the other thing is, uh, I think what was very uh, good was when we saw, we were at the last breakfast of the Auto Board of Trade when Kevin Ford from Callian said, uh, basically told all the candidates in the room, stay out of the way. And uh, as far as uh, encouraging business. So I think what we have to do is do the best we can to, to help businesses uh, survive. Uh, businesses, um, you know, face a lot of things through the pandemic. Um, and, you know, they're having trouble now struggling with uh, keeping people hired in skilled labor. So those are just a couple of things. And uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Thank you very much. And uh, certainly not least, but uh, last to introduce uh, would be Kathleen Cott from War 24, uh, which is Bar Haven East. Over to you, Kathleen. Hello, and thanks for this opportunity to say hello again to everybody. Um, I uh, lived in Barhaven for 17 years and moved to Nova Scotia and coming back to Ottawa because of the COVID situation, what I've seen is a much different Barhaven than the one that I left um, on, on many different levels. Um, the most important one being a, a much more diversified community. Um, in terms of what I'd like to see for businesses, having been an entrepreneur, self-employed and author of a book in Barhaven, I'd like to see some twinning of businesses between small businesses and the larger businesses, sort of working together and being more inclusive, not just because of diversification, but also because of experience and uh, levels of participation in the business community. I think there would be some great value, for example, with Amazon having such um, an amazing opportunity in Barhaven to be twinning with small businesses there and working with the small businesses to interact with the Amazon community, I think would be a value. Um, I'm a person that is a collaborator. I'm a leader that, and it's, it's not something that's very common that a leader is a collaborator. But for me, every one of the candidates in Barhaven have something of value, something that represents a part of our community. And to me, I could see developing a round table with all of them involved if I were elected to because I think that they bring something of value to to what we can do in Barhaven to make it better. And similarly in all of Ottawa, because there, the diversification is right across the board in Ottawa, wherever you live. And we need to think about how we can roll up our sleeves and work together. There you go. You didn't get the flag, so that must be good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Kathleen. So the, the uh, again, we, we can't thank you enough. I know how busy it is to be out on the on the campaign trail and uh, you're taking time away from uh, reaching constituents directly and uh, hopefully we can we'll do our best to be able to promote today and sending it through to our membership uh, the network the between our membership and, and moving out to their employees uh, is really crucial uh, you know we're, we're really encouraging um, businesses to 
uh, give their their employees a little bit of time, paid time off on Monday as one example to get out and and vote. It's it's so important. So that's one example. Though there'll, there'll be there'll be more uh, that that continue to roll out via email to some of our, our business members. Um, but the other piece of that is, okay, here, here's the time, here's the commitment. In a perfect world, we would target uh, and say, okay, the, you know, here are the business members that are in Ward 9, let's say, and okay, let's send this video directly to those business members. The reality is we don't have the resources for that. It'll be far more kind of spread out, you know, and here are all of the, the, the videos from that we've done with, uh, with uh, such as today. But, um, but that said, we're, we're again, we're very appreciative of you taking the time and uh, collaborating here with us to keep using the same word on purpose. So I have a, I have a question and we'll go kind of round table with this question using the old randomizer again. Um, and it, it's, it's really centered around the, the, there are a lot of jurisdictions around the world that have started to now invest uh, aggressively in post pandemic kind of economic plans. Um, there's a lot of focus uh, in other jurisdictions around attracting talent and attracting investment to those communities. Um, in Ottawa, we, we've been a little bit slow to be able to, to realize that. And there's some realities around the, the federal public service that Ottawa will always have. But if we, notwithstanding that, how do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs? Right. And I'll, and I'll give you everybody about two minutes or so. I'll, I'll give you the the, the flag warning or uh, at about a two minute mark so you can wrap up your thought but um, love to hear from you your thoughts on on how do we inspire confidence for investors and for entrepreneurs and I'll go to there we go, I'll turn this thing on again Atik, Atik Qureshi uh, your, your first uh, how do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs uh being a financial consultant, I make business plans for the businesses, and I also have a, a run business also. So the we, what I see, there are we need to ease down the regulations to work with the city. What I observe, there are a lot of hurdles where uh, businesses are not getting approvals quickly, and there is a, a lack of transparency, and there is a delay in their approval processes. So for that reason, businesses are not willing to invest, come forward, and then it's a time lag because more the time waste that uh, they are not, they are wasting money. So the quicker that uh, approval time for their project uh -huh. the city hall will be, that, uh, uh, that is attraction for the investor, they can come in. I'm a huge, uh, uh, I'm quite vocal for public and private partnerships. There must be a balance with the strict accountability. If we can do that, we can produce a way much good result. Because Ottawa GDP is 76.6 million. I'm quoting the old figures. This is not a small GDP. It's a big numbers. And look at the city. We are not doing anything. For 20 years, I'm seeing this. So where this money go, how they are spending it. So this is something I, I will definitely, first of all, if I will be there, I will definitely work to ease down the regulations to make the regulations uh, uh, effective and uh, less timely and uh, fix the bureaucracy. That is one of the things so they can work on timely rather than delaying, uh, reduce the delaying tactics. So investor can uh, invest and they know that what they are coming up for, they will get uh, their project being approved quickly and they can have a better result for the future. So this is how, something I'm uh, looking at this uh, and, uh, at this as well. Thank you very much. Again, I, I'd love to interact more uh, and, and explore some ideas. We have time constraints and then we also have just the constraint around, uh, you know, not wanting to, inadvertently endorse uh, anybody but uh, but uh, some 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 great comments there we, we really asked the Board of Trade has been asking not just on the development front although that one seems to be um, very apparent we're looking at you know increases in costs on uh, for 
to build a, a home, numbers between 80 and $100,000 just to get through uh, approval processes. So that certainly doesn't help the affordability uh, on the affordability front uh, as just one micro example. And we're not the, uh, the voice of the builders by any means, but it does affect affordable housing, uh, which is so important to, uh, to the business community. We can't attract talent here uh, with, um, if home prices are, are you know, the way they are as one, one again, micro example. So uh, thank you for, for your comments. I'm turning it over to uh, Richard Garrick, uh, Ward 24 Barhaven East. Uh, Richard, how do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs? Uh, so great question. It's something I've been asked at the door similarly is, is bringing Ottawa back to be a viable, livable city. Uh, you know, we have a great opportunity here with Ottawa University, our colleges, our post-secondary to keep a lot of skilled trade and a lot of skilled workers here in our community who are setting up, you know, ideas for small businesses. They want to grow. Uh, you look at Canada as a tech sector in the late 90s, early 2000s. You know, Ford is coming back out there with autonomous cars, same with just around Barhaven and Knoxville. We have to work uh, together. We have to work with not only our community partners, we have to work with our universities, our school boards, you know, getting kids at that level as well, engage in that community. But again, making Ottawa a viable and livable city, you know, we have to be able to get to work. We have to be able, as you said, to afford homes. If we don't have those jobs that can help those people afford those things, we are not sustainable, we are not viable. Uh, we have to listen to the small business community. Uh, we also have to, you know, as a city, look at options for where they can grow. Um, you know, establishing an arts center, establishing community areas where small businesses can rent space from the city to run a small business, uh, community markets. Uh, you know, these things have been seen in Detroit and, and Southern Michigan. Maybe it's something we look at here as well. Um, confidence wise, I think we have to also, as a city council, start working together. We are not talking to each other. We all have different ideas. There has to be kind of a level-headed approach and a common sense approach to bringing what everybody wants in Ottawa, not just Barhaven, in Ottawa. Um, if we don't have those resources, how are they gonna grow? Um, engaging with other businesses as well. Home Depot is a great example. I was there for 10 years and they paid half my university tuition because I was working for the company and was gonna give back to the company. We need to invest in small businesses and help with those kinds of grants and options and look at everything on the table to, to sustain this. Um, you know, the small business in our city, especially since the pandemic, has become a pivotal point in our community. We are seeing a lot of them shifting out of the downtown core uh, into areas like Canada, Barhaven. We need to also look at a plan for the downtown core. What are we going to do there? There's a great opportunity for small businesses with tourism that is lacking right now with the lack of people coming to the city. We have a lot of options. And again, if we don't have a transit system that gets us to these places, we don't have an economic development committee that has access to proper roads, transit, active transit, use to the airport. I mean, Barhaven's about to get a big warehouse and we're gonna have trucks and things like that on our roads, but we have to work together to find those solutions, getting access to the airports, getting there to the roads, getting people to their jobs like Amazon. I know for a direct fact that somebody at Amazon couldn't get there because they didn't have proper access to transit uh, due to a wheelchair. And they had to, they were coming, paying an Uber every day. So we have to be viable. We have to make this a livable city, keep our skilled trade and invite skilled trade to our community. Uh, that's how we sustain small business and drive that confidence. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Richard. We're, we're uh, actively over the years as the Board of Trade has been more involved with um, the city. And, and we think of the city as, as partners lots and lots of cases. We're not always you know, advocating. It's not always loud advocacy, uh, but starting to have, have more of a seat at the table or as a, uh, when it comes to economic development. Right? And you mentioned economic development and uh, shocked to, to learn that the first phase of LRT had no economic development, even though we had a great economic development team inside the city. Very, very little economic development uh, lens put on such a, such a large project for our city, right? So some of the work that the Board of Trade has done uh, is to say, hold on, the, the business community needs a seat at that at the, these major in, these major projects really need to have a, a lens on you know some some of the return on investment which is kind of goes in line with I think what you were saying so thank you for your comments uh, I'm doing what I said I wouldn't do right I'm interacting it's too hard it's too hard not to like want to dialogue as much as I as I can but I'll I'll reel it in I promise uh, over to who's next here. Uh, Kathleen Cott, uh, Kathleen from Ward 24, Barhaven East. Uh, how do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs? Well, here's something that you might not have been thinking I might be answering. 
like, um, I'm, because I'm going to tell you a little story. On uh, Women's Day, I was um, a few years back, I was a member of Women in Business, and uh, we organized going down to the Shepherds of Good Hope. It happened to be like a really bad snowstorm that particular day, and very few people came. But what I learned from this experience was when you engage your heart, amazing things happen. And from that day, there was lots of stories I could tell, but it's clearly not today would be the day. You know, Patrick, Brennan and I have been on uh, business groups together in the past in Bar Haven. And we've worked on a variety of things involving charity together. And I think, and I, and I know that um, many of the candidates are engaged in a variety of different things that are charity based. And when you bring businesses into charity, we make things happen and it translates back into your business. The Shepherds of Good Hope have just been on the news yesterday talking about how, you know, how many people are homeless, how many people don't have food. We're, this is the heart of every business that they have to look at anyway. And why wouldn't we want to focus on doing that? That will inspire others, that we will take care of the least of us in our community, will inspire the every business to come and join hands. And if they aren't, then they should be, because that's really what the problem is. We need to take care of those that can't take care of themselves right now, lift them up and help them into places. And being an entrepreneur, I know that many people have lifted themselves up into small businesses. And then there's lots of success stories of people who have, have gone farther. So I think that if we spend time taking care of the people that need us the most, then the businesses will come and be attracted to this community because we care. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you very much. I'm gonna do what I said I wouldn't do and that's, that's engage again. But uh, to, to your point, the Ottawa Board of Trade uh, this evening as an example is hosting a mayoral debate uh, with, with some partners. Those partners are, I would think again, if we're, if we're asking for collaboration, um, we need to be able to walk that walk. So our partner for the debate is the United Way. The other partner on the debate is actually Ottawa Labor uh, Council, where you know often business and labor are at odds and, and probably not often enough are we putting business and social justice in the same category. But to your point, um, the Board of Trade also really believes that those two things do go hand in hand. And when you build a community that's very charitable and um, and to, has safety nets and takes care of its residents, that uh, that is a place where businesses thrive as well. And the two font, the tax generated through business uh, does of course provide in many cases, the bulk of the funding for the organizations that do this great work, but it goes hand in hand, right? And then, and so one drives the other and vice versa. And we, we believe it's, it's cyclical to, to your point. So. Uh, thank you. And over to Wilson Lowe. Uh, Wilson uh, from Ward 24 as well, Barhaven East. Uh, Wilson, how do we inspire confidence for investors and uh, entrepreneurs? Uh, one of the biggest ways is to believe in the local talent that we have in Ottawa. We have um, so much local talent, so much potential, and it's unfortunately often overlooked because of the way procurement works in this city, at both, both at the municipal and the federal level. Um, we have to always count federal level just because of the size and the influence they have over the city. But, uh, you know, even though the upfront cost, even though the upfront cost, sorry, should, uh, might be higher, um, the, the customer service, the support that we get from local talent, not to mention the tangential effects, the trigger, the trigger, the trickle down uh, benefits um, benefit this community in ways that go so far beyond uh, financial, right? Um, things like uh, supporting our uh, small businesses, supporting our large businesses. Uh, we can't, we can't take, we can't completely ignore the fact that uh, franchisees, for example, play a role in the local economy. They are just as much an integral part of the community, and often they they sink as much liability into their businesses as independent owners, right? Um, we need to support that community to make sure that as good as neighbors they are, that we're, we're similar and that uh, we're supporting them like a good neighbor. Uh, working with the BIA uh, work to uh, help promote and advance the, um, promote and advocate the interests of uh, small businesses so that they don't suffer uh, anymore after they have for the last two and a half years. Um, on, on the municipal services side, uh, it's things like 
making sure that people can get around to access these small businesses, whether it's um, by car, whether it's by uh, cycling, by walking, or by public transit, bringing uh, LRT back out here. The first phase of the LRT was an opportunity for us to really reimagine what our travel corridors actually are. Um, a way to maybe improve transit and bring this rapid transit to these main street corridors that we have all over the city. And yet we decided to go with this simple route of um, of just, you know, snipping two ends of the transitway off and, uh, and putting a rail onto it. And that was a huge missed opportunity, I think, to try to get um, this rapid transit, bringing a lot to to bring a lot of people into um, our, our more traditional main street areas. And unfortunately, it's going to continue guiding us I guess with further LRT expansion by just using the transitway corridors instead of really rethinking what are uh, where where we can really bring people to help these uh, businesses thrive, businesses and communities overall thrive. Thank you very much, Wilson. Our when we polled our members, um, there was an overwhelming amount of support for the the um, bringing the LRT to the Ottawa Airport. You know, as quickly as possible. Obviously, it's in the plans, but uh, how it gets there and the timelines and delays, et cetera, and to, uh, to being able to connect the airport to the city and, uh, and it was a priority of our of our membership. And then obviously, smart connections and just smart um, smart infrastructure seem to be seem to really resonate with our with our members, right? And and that I think might mean something a little different to to everyone, but. Um, but it's it's putting a little bit more thought into uh, the innovative part of infrastructure and how that uh, works in the city. So I'll I'll, I'll stop there again. But um, thank you. I'll turn it over to um, M M McClellan in uh, Ward 22, Riverside South. Uh, over to you. How do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs? Hi. Um... One of the biggest problems I was dealing with within our ward, for instance, is uh, there was a restaurant and it was viable, had the clientele and they couldn't get the workers in. Part of the reason they couldn't get the workers in is because of the unreliability of the OC Transpo. And I think we should put a huge emphasis on having the OC Transpo accountable so these people can get to their jobs. That was one. Uh, another problem I had is that when you take small restaurants out of communities, like for instance, the table went down in New Edinburgh and it wasn't the fact that they weren't a viable business. It was the fact that the workers couldn't get in. And then they, the people that were using the restaurant assumed that the workers, their quality of life was basically spent on the OC Transpo getting in two and a half hours because there wasn't enough affordable housing for these people to live. So they were going further and further out so that they could accommodate their rent. And we've got to work together collaboratively because it's great to have Amazon, but in order for distinction to occur in your community, you have to have your small businesses and you have to work with them and they work with you. And as a counselor, I want to work with them to see what I can do, what the city can do. Do we need zoning, uh, rezoning? For instance, uh, the Mosquito Creek Mall, there's absolutely no reason we can't put certain specifics like only restaurants or specialized food can go into this mall. That way we'd have a restaurant district, we have specialized food shops, like a bakery, stuff like that, to make not only the community distinct, but also to, help promote a distinction of your community but i have to work with oc transpo to get your workers in and i have to deal with the fact that i don't think small businesses are given um accessibility to uh the city councillors it's like how can i help you that is my job how can i help keep my community viable through small businesses so that's what i'd like to see happen Thank you very much, Em. Turn it over to Aaron Coffin, Ward 23, Canada South. I'm I'm connecting in here from Bridalwood, and I have a feeling that you're just down the road from me. And here we are, both in our have homes. I not both have I knocked on your door yet? I, I I'm uh, I'm also neutral, nonpartisan, but you know you uh, haven't. <laughs> well, maybe you have. Right. Know, but, Go yeah. Bridalwood. 
Um, no, uh, definitely. It's one of the things that I, I'm, when I'm talking to people, seeing businesses also having grown up here. I mean, when I was 15, I swore I would never come back to Canada South because it wasn't thriving. And I think, you know, I see teenagers and I see young people and I see families and seniors just looking for a little bit of fun in the backyard, whether it is recreation, whether it is being able to get around your neighborhood. Well, I think really the secret to um, attracting talent attracting entrepreneurs and investment really is a thriving community what i have seen in the last few years is that business in canada south isn't thriving and if it is sort of thriving it likes to go somewhere else like canada north or bar haven or sitzville because those are areas that are thriving uh yes we have a small business network community group but i mean that's not keeping folks in our area we really need is to have affordable housing and ways for workers to be here so entrepreneurs and small businesses have access to um, employees and employees have access to business also basically making sure the transit works i did a, a transit run from superstore to tanger took me an hour and 23 minutes and somebody who ran it took 40 minutes to run there. So, I mean, it's just, there's no reliability. There's nothing making people stick here, but it's also not just the city and the city responsibility. I mean, that's a huge part, but we also need to facilitate and work with other levels of government, like the province, like the feds, to get the investments here, whether it's funding more transit, funding more infrastructure, getting better healthcare, getting better, um, opportunities that are other responsibilities of other levels of government here in our communities. So people want to live here. I mean, the biggest problem I'm hearing right now is that nobody has family doctors. How do we attract doctors? There's a shortage. Why would they want to come here? If they come here, what are we doing for them? How are we getting them their employees? How are we getting them their clients? How are we getting them the access they need to finding the right places and the right resources for their businesses, their all that kind of thing. So I think in a big part, it really is also not just being a counselor and available. Absolutely. Do I want to help small business? Yes. I used to run the West End food truck rally and I took a huge um, responsibility in getting them to come to my event. And I want to make sure I could get as many people there. So it's successful for them. So if I can get them to come to my neighborhood, I want to make sure that they're as successful as possible. And that is looking into things like business improvement authorities, Bell's Corners has one and, you know, for a long time it's been thriving, uh, it has its days and whatnot, but like Canada North has one, Barhaven has one. I have businesses here in Canada South who are thriving on the residual um, inf influence of the Barhaven BIA because they have businesses there. Um, and it's, and people say it's a tax on businesses, but I don't think it is because then the small businesses wouldn't be leaving Canada South to go to places with BIAs. So. Yeah, I definitely think that what we need to do is make this a thriving community. I mean, I joke at the doors, uh, my kingdom for a walkable wine bar, bar with a nice wine list and some <laughs> craft beers. I mean, I think every parent desires that, not just the Mick Cafe five minutes away from my house. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that we, we have been advocating for is um, better health and, and specifically for the new campus of uh, the Ottawa Hospital, uh, the Board of Trade and, and members said, you know, this this project needs to happen and, and it can't happen in 2045. Uh, so, you know, it will take all three levels of government to your point to make that happen. Is there some some tweaks to that project potentially? Uh, you know, it's, nothing's perfect as it comes out of the gate, but this, this will attract doctors to the community and it will attract a ton of medical technology. Uh, uh, you know, we look at, we have a, such a great technology sector here in Ottawa, um, they're telling us that this hospital will also attract uh, world-class medical technology uh, organizations that will want to set up shop here in Ottawa as well. So we kind of get we kind of get to have our cake and eat it too by also getting great health care for the community. So this is well, a, Rick, a win -win. Just, just to add to the hospital being built is we have out in Orleans a great medical hub uh, that is thriving, that is, is allowing the hospitals to do what hospitals should do and have more of the critical care, but not emergency uh, life-threatening care to be in your community, to have the diagnostics, to have the technicians, to have the technology, to have the medical um, uh, expertise there to deal with people. So we don't have illnesses that turn into chronic illnesses and cost us all a lot of money and as a community to basically sustain that, that the community and those issues. So if we could get something like that here in the West End, 
that would take a huge pressure off a lot of those hospitals, but also be a thriving community because if you know you're getting healthcare and med good medical care, you're gonna to come to Ottawa. I have people who would love to live here, but they don't wanna come here because they're afraid of losing their family doctor back home, wherever they are else in the, in the province. So if we can get these, these things figured out with the different levels of government so we thrive, people will wanna come here and that's gonna be a huge, huge improvement. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. End of I will. I will uh, turn things to. Uh, this is. This is why the the board of trade said don't engage too much because then we'll be going around <laughs> anyway. Anyway, but I can't help it. This is all great yeah. points and and uh, it's excellent. Uh, from uh, again from a collaboratory standpoint, uh, great to connect with all of you that way. Uh, over to uh, Pat uh, Patrick Brennan, Ward Twenty Four, Barhaven East. Back to the to the 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 question at hand is how do we inspire confidence for investors and entrepreneurs? Uh, thanks, Rick. Uh, well, as I said before, Ottawa is a great city. And, uh, you know, with over 30 years in finance and, and support, of, uh, support of small business, uh, to inspire uh, comp and attract companies is something that uh, I think is, is really important for, for Ottawa. And uh, some of the points I touched on earlier is uh, a trans transit is a big one. Without question, we've got to get uh, uh, transit to work properly. Uh, some of my colleagues today have said, mentioned about, you know, employees, uh, uh, the inability to get to work and those kinds of things. So we have to, we have to uh, really take a hard look at uh, OC Transpo and the LRT and, and get things sorted out. Um, the other way to create environment is also uh, by the housing supply. Once again, we're in a situation where there is a lack of housing and uh, affordable housing. So we have to do what we can to, you know, attract, you know, attract people to come here uh, where they don't have to, uh, you know, overspend on homes so that there is a big, there is a big issue there. The other thing that attracts families, and I think Ottawa has done a quite a pretty good job, certainly in, in Ward uh, 24 at Barhaven is uh, parks and recreation. Families are attracted to, uh, you know, nice parks and recreation. And we do have a number of bike paths and walking paths and a lot of beautiful uh, scenery in Ottawa. So we are, uh, we are blessed with that. Healthcare um, is another big one. And uh, I think Aaron made a great point just on the family doctors and also uh, shortages of nurses as well. We've got to address that. Whether it means adding more, uh, you know, have more residents come through uh, medical schools, more students and, and resident positions, we're, we're going to have to, uh, encourage that from the provincial and federal government. Um, also, on the point of um, infrastructure, um, right now Ottawa, as you know, Ottawa's airport, uh, you know, really now that the pandemic's over a bit, there's very few direct flights to a lot of locations, and I think that uh, we've got to encourage uh, certainly, um, you know, and it's hard to do, but you know, they have to have the they have to have the uh, uh, the you know the, the number of passengers have to increase for them to support certain routes, but that would be really helpful. And I think we, we have to do what we can to once again create the environment to 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 make that happen. Also, collaborating with the federal and provincial governments is important for uh, various programs. Um, just like the Canada Business Park the other day, they they had the announcement with Nokia, and uh, I think that 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 was that was really good. And uh, finally, counselors have to be have to collaborate too. I think it's important that we have uh, civility at the council table, and this puts on a good, you know, a good show for uh, for anyone coming here. Thanks. Thank you very much, Patrick. And uh, I'll turn it over to uh, from Ward Nine, which is uh, Knoxville and Maryville area. Uh, Michael Wood. Michael, how do we inspire? confidence for investors and entrepreneurs. Thanks so much, Rick. And I apologize. Uh, my internet cut out here at the house and uh, that's why I disappeared for a second. You know, one of the things that we have to remember is that small businesses in the industry play a bigger role in our community than simply serving customers. What we have to do is we have to highlight all of those wonderful opportunities that people are doing for others in the community. Our local small businesses sponsor people's children's hockey teams, soccer teams, 
baseball teams. And if we can highlight people doing these things, then investors are going to look at Ottawa as a great place that is community driven. So to give you just an idea, when I owned a small business, we created something called Keep Audible Warm. And the idea was we had 10,000 people on our mailing list and we reached out to all of our customers and said, please bring us your winter clothing donations, which we then took to Shepherds of Good Hope, Cornerstone for Women and the mission. At Christmas time with Costco, we teamed up with them. We called them, we said, listen, uh, what are you doing with the frozen turkeys that aren't gonna sell? They said, we send them back to head office. They said, can we have them? They said, yeah. So we went to Costco, we picked up, they gave us 180 turkeys to take down to the shelters. So having said this, small businesses play a critical role in our community. The one thing I also wanna add, because there's some confusion, all of us here who are here supporting small business today, I'm gonna to speak for myself and I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody else. We're not advocating to run the city like a business. They are two totally different things, but some of the core values that we're gonna to bring to the table of helping people in our community will only lead to more investment, more people wanting to come to Ottawa. And we have to highlight everybody. We can't, if we've got two people or organizations that aren't seeing eye to eye, that's fine. Let's keep that off the radar and let's just help each other focus on making Ottawa the best city that it can be we all work together. We can do this. Pat, I think you were saying something uh, about balance and civility at, this, at the uh, council table. At no other time in our history has kindness mattered more than now. We all have to work together. We all have to be focused to just be there for each other, whether it's the councillors working together, whether it's the councillors working for the ward or cross ward. If somebody is more experienced in something in another ward, than you are, work together, make our city better, and that will create more investment and more interest in people coming here to Ottawa. Thanks, Rick. Thank you very much, Michael. And it does speak to, uh, you know, again, I, I'm coming back around to the debate tonight with United Way and how we start to now highlight and work and start to collaborate uh, even more with, with an organization like that between the business community and the 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 an organization that does such a great job of helping this community. So uh, to your point, uh, exactly. We do think that, that one drives the other and vice versa. Um, I, I don't, I wanna be respectful of everybody's time. You've uh, you've given us a lot of it here today. Uh, what I think is great is if we look around the the room, we have a couple of, of counselors, at least a few on the line here today. And uh, that's, that's always uh, exciting for us, but also uh, conscious that, that you're all uh, exceptional community leaders and uh, as I said off the top, we want to keep the dialogue going with you. Uh, we hope to continue to do some roundtables between the Board of Trade and and in uh, it'll be even easier to do it kind of word by word almost uh, as we move forward to be able to bring some community leaders to the table and, and work closely with the with the business community. Um, so uh, thank you on behalf of the business community for taking time today. We will be promoting this, as I said, off the top out with our with our broad membership and also with the, the general public. Um, I want to thank uh, Andrea uh, Steenbakers, who's joined us from the Barhaven BIA here as well, and is on uh, between events, but still took the time to uh, to come in and, and join us. Thank you, uh, Andrea, for being here as well, and to the Board of Trade for organizing this. And uh, as I said, I'm I'm a volunteer, and but the uh, Board of Trade has put a lot of resources towards uh, this and, and towards connecting with uh, with our our future council and and community leaders such as all of you so on behalf of the business community all the best for the next few days it's going to be very busy i'm sure uh and uh but we're we're uh couldn't be happier to be collaborating with all of you thank you to everybody who's listening and watching this recording uh uh we uh, appreciate you taking the time as well to inform yourself and obviously we need to encourage everyone around us to get out and vote on monday so thank you again, everybody, on behalf of the Board of Trade. Uh, have a great day, and uh, thank you so much. Bye for now. Thanks, Rick.